come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Freak Show fiends. We should have a name for our fans. Or for our fans. They're not the freaks. Our, they're, we're the freak show freaks. We're the oh, freaks. Oh, we are. I thought we were the freaks. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. All right. They're so the freaks. We'll okay. come up with something by the end of the show. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with we what won't. you're listening to, if this is your first episode, welcome. Thanks for listening. And why this one? Uh, yeah. Maybe you're a fan of, uh, or maybe you thought that this was a rival, not that's what we're hoping for. Arrival. We're hoping to get those people. <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, they're talking about Arrival. <laughs> but what we do is uh, every Saturday we watch a movie, then we sit around a bar and we uh, try to, uh, you know, assign meaning to these films. And we suss through them. We, we get our fingers dirty, getting in there, trying to find out <laughs> what it's all about. Search the, the minutia of all these films. The minutia and the manure. Yep. That's right. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> these are the internet radio superstars you're going to be hearing from. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight, Sean chose the movie. Sean, what did we watch tonight? <laughs> we, we, why are you laughing already? <laughs> why is this? we already gave it away. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah okay. uh, the Arrival. The arrival, arrival. The Arrival. From the year... 1996. And directed by... David Toohey. Written and directed by David Toohey. All right. That name sounds familiar, Sean. He's done a few things you might have heard of. Uh, he has written, he's written a bunch. Uh, Waterworld, my personal favorite. Oh, yeah. Uh, what else? Wait, that's got? your personal favorite? I mean. things he's done? Uh, no. Uh, he uh, was a writer on Critters 2. Eh? Uh, See our previous yeah, podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Warlock, one see of our, Colin's see, favorites. Yep, see, see our, our previous, previous podcast. podcast. <laughs> oh, The Fugitive, he was a writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warlock, The Armageddon. Uh, characters only. Yes. <laughs> Terminal Velocity. Uh, the but then he Waterworld. struck pay dirt when he came up with the character of Richard, Jane? Richard B. Oh. Riddick. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he really Pitch did. Black. <clears throat> Is it Richard done... B. Riddick? Mm-hmm. Is that his full name? Oh, yeah, what? Have you haven't seen these movies? I've seen Pitch Black. I have no desire to see the rest of those movies. Are they any good? Um, The third one isn't too bad. They the, tried the really hard to make like... them. Uh, goes far afield, and then the third one tries to course correct and bring it back. The first one, Pitch Black's pretty good. I like Pitch Black. Yeah. Oh, it was done by this guy because this movie is like glasses porn. Like everyone has really distinct stylized glasses, and like yeah. Charlie, <laughs> Char- t- yeah, yeah, and a lot of fucking Riddick glasses. Yeah, and yeah, yeah Charlie Sheen even oh, has the fucking Riddick glasses yeah, throughout does. this whole and movie. Those sunglasses with the sides. Yeah. On them. Oh, I, when I was young, I always wanted a pair of those. I wanted to smack those off his face the whole <laughs> fucking movie. Everyone is like trying to make a statement with their glasses in this movie, like whether it's how they take them off or yeah. like just it's the Hollywood, weird style it's eyewear. Uh, oh, yeah, that's very true. Nobody takes their glasses off as well as uh, David Caruso. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also did. Uh, he wrote and directed uh, the perfect, a perfect, a perfect getaway. getaway. Yes, the perfect, a perfect getaway. A perfect getaway. Which uh, I didn't realize until looking that up. That was my uh, when I lived in L.A. That was my first Hollywood premiere that I went to. Mm. I got to go see that. That's pretty good. And he hang, also did hang a, out with the stars, quote unquote. Uh, <laughs> hang out by, you were in the same room with them and they were, you know. Yeah, and they were there. Room. I peed next to Tom Everett Scott. Wow. Ooh. That's, thank you. That's, thank you. <laughs> thank how, you. How was he that? looked at me, not while we were <laughs> at the urinals, <laughs> but we said hi and that was all. And then I hung out with a pregnant Marley Shelton for the rest of the night. That was oh, about there it. There you go. <laughs> well, but that was fun. I have more cool questions too. about Tom Everett Scott's <laughs> penis, but we'll talk <laughs> about that later. I mean,. We'll save the details. For okay. That. He also did a haunted submarine movie called Below that you should check out. I don't think mm-hmm. enough people have even heard of that movie, but it's pretty decent. Pretty decent. Mm-hmm. And this movie stars self-professed warlock Carlos Estevez, aka you Charlie might know Sheen. him as yeah Charlie the Winner Sheen, <laughs> winning Charlie, Charlie winning Charlie Sheen. Tiger Blood Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We're really we're really going back with some bad old. <laughs> we're, 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 we're dating this, but like ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this is Charlie Sheen, the star of The Wraith. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Navy yeah. Seals. Navy. No? Okay. Navy Seals. Okay. <laughs> All right. What was the one where he was a biker? We keep coming back to that. I think every time we look Charlie Sheen, <laughs> every like, time we what was the one where he played a biker with a beard and oh, long hair? Oh, uh, I looked all these up earlier today. What was that? I don't, I don't remember no. that at all. Because oh, I, I don't think it was a theatrical thing. I remember Punk Charlie Sheen from Ferris Bueller in the leather yeah, jacket. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, Red Dawn, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this is late career Charlie Sheen. Well, no, I mean we're talking. Well, this is probably a peak. Like, it, no, uh, aside from uh, well, mm-hmm. a peak movie. Down, downhill side of the peak. Uh, like, yeah. Where, where is? Uh, hold on, where well, is? He was part of the Major the... League in this whole oh, scenario. Oh yeah, I think That's it's before this. Was Eighty nine. Yeah. 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 So way before this. Yeah, he yeah. was part of the the Brat Pack in Hollywood. So yeah. this is kind of the, he's branched out. He's on his own. Hot shots. How do we forget hot shots? Yeah. That's early nineties. Part two. Yeah. Pre arrival, the arrival. He apparently makes a cameo in Loaded Weapon. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, favorite Charlie Sheen movies? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like top three. Uh, I, oh, I don't even have yeah, three that I like yeah. that much. I don't particularly care for his I movies. I remember when I was a kid, I really liked The Chase. I, that's, yeah, yeah, I was gonna, yeah. I, I loved yeah. that. Chase. I loved that when I was a kid. That's Christy a Swanson. good movie. Yeah. yeah. He kidnaps her with a candy bar. Oh, Christy. Yeah, yeah he does. <laughs> you kidnap me with a candy bar? Maybe that's a good Red movie. Dawn, right? Because Probably Red Dawn. Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Red Dawn. That was great. Major yeah. League. Yeah. This one, before I watched it tonight, this one was up there. <laughs> oh, uh, we have to stay tuned to find out what we actually thought of the movie like, later on in the show. And then we'll I remember it a little bit. So. Well, okay, maybe give us a synopsis, then we'll come back and, and address certain moments in the movie. But briefly, what's this movie about? For those of the, uh, our listeners who haven't heard of it. Charlie Sheen is a, uh, he's it's something radio wave specific, but he operates association with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. He scans space for uh, signals that are not from Earth, basically. That's about it. Well, this is a big yeah. deal in the 90s. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Because The X-Files was a big uh, TV show at this point in time. You ever mm-hmm. seen a movie called Fire in the Sky? Mm-hmm. Which I think mm-hmm. was maybe the same year as this. Maybe it was 94. That was a pretty good, like, alien abduction yeah. story. Yeah. But the whole, like, aliens visiting the Earth and alien abduction stories and all this stuff was uh, in the zeitgeist mm-hmm. in, the ni- in the 1990s. Independence yes. Day, I think, Independence was the same Day, year. Independence Day, same year. Right. Probably within months, I would say, mm-hmm. released. Yeah. What was going on? It's like the satanic panic of the 80s was the alien abduction stuff of the 90s. Like, yeah. we don't really hear a whole lot about that kind of thing anymore. No. It's a it's hysteria that has passed. I, it's a hysteria that's passed, and I'm pretty sure they're finding other reasons for, like, you didn't see aliens, you're psychologically disturbed, or something else is wrong. They've come up with other reasons for why people think they've been abducted by aliens or have seen things. Yeah, I would guess. Your body's remembering times that you've been under uh, so, yeah. the, you know, when you're in a in a hospital situation. Right, same. The fourth crazy. kind effect. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everything yeah. post the fourth kind is just like, oh, well, you yeah. just had trauma in your yes. life. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The same people who uh, claim to have out-of-body experiences while undergoing surgery and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But at the same, same time, like, all kinds of government agencies are releasing information now. That's like been just the past couple of years. They're like putting all of their files online. So I'm surprised they that it's not delved into a little more, mm. to be honest. I'm surprised it hasn't made a comeback yet. Well, I mean, they brought the X-Files back to TV like True. Briefly, uh, in 20 last year in 2016. Mm-hmm. How'd that and, go? Well, it was odd watching it now because like, you know, it's still going after the, you know, um, you know, we're not alone. Kind right. of, I want to mm-hmm. believe. And you're just kind of like. Wow, this feels like You're I just remember saying when this phrases. was a thing. Mm-hmm. Well, have you seen the show? Do you know the ex- you know. I know. I've seen twenty something episodes of it. Never the whole thing. Yeah, the movies. Yeah, but it was like very of its time, and mm-hmm. doing it now, it like just kind of feels out of step with you know. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's relevant yeah. in any yeah. way anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what happened? Do we need like a new a new thing? A new alien? A new Bigfoot? Called the arrival. The, New one. Eh, I mean, that's kind of like... It's such a different type of movie. Yeah. Like, it's such a different approach to alien... I don't even know if you can call it invasion. Like, yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of how we have to digest alien movies now. Yeah. Is yeah. like, we have to take, the, take it apart and mm-hmm. try to understand it instead of being confrontational with it. Yeah. Yeah. I miss the confrontational days. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, when <laughs> aliens just came down and wanted to fuck you over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That was well, you know, that was, I was, wait, I wait for those days. But it was post like <laughs> ET, right? I mean, mm-hmm. like, you had like the. It seems like alien movies. I mean, what throughout history you had, you know, Earth versus the flying saucers kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. They, uh, the Earth stood still, and the, that kind of fifties fascination with keep watching the skies. Yes. And, you know, the flying saucer men from Mars, and then you have kind of the wonder of the Spielberg era, you know, the close encounters and ET and that eventually gives way to, you know, then you have an alien, you know, alien. Yes. The creepy one. You've seen the nice ones. Yeah. What happens when they're not nice. And then like the full on alien invasions of like V, the lizard people and, uh, yes. And Independence Day. 
Have we become more uh, distracted with other forms of invasion? Not necessarily aliens, but more... Uh, I don't want to say disease, but it kind of feels like... The pathogen and yeah, the I think, contagion and yeah, all that stuff. I think yeah. we've more moved on to that era yeah. as mm-hmm. sort of a fascination rather than aliens coming from everywhere else. Because, I don't know, maybe people have figured at this point, the, the pathogen way is real. <laughs> or it can be real, or some version of that is something that we can fear. Aliens, we're not seeing much on that front these days. Yeah, and right now, like the big one is terrorism. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah, that, we're that, that's about, the huge one. Yeah, yeah, we're worried about that stuff. I think you can still do like an alien, you know, as a metaphor. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Where you, you yeah, know, but they don't seem to be attacking that. As much, at no. least I don't think so. Because I mean, Independence right. Day resurgence, Ooh. you know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sean shudders. I think we just realized that <laughs> humans are going to suck infinitely more than any other species right. could. So right. we just have to fear ourselves mostly at this yeah. point. So right. that well, doesn't seem only terrifying anymore, right? Yeah. Hey, what's right. Up? Welcome. Can, you can I go with things. you? Yeah. Or can you blow us up? Or something? Mm-hmm. And you also get to like a design like limit it almost seems like it's like we're you know aliens become i mean now it's like every alien that i see in a movie is designed by patrick the topless he's the you know the guy who did cloverfield mm-hmm. and, whatnot, right. and, and they all kind of look like that mm-hmm. yeah in the mm-hmm. no no i don't think anybody nowadays would make a movie where they are technically the little green men where you get that the smaller body and the huge head and the big like mm-hmm. Paul? shaped Remember eyes. Paul? Yeah, Paul, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. I love You're that the movie. Only one who yeah. Paul. I love that movie. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> And that was a comedy. Like that wasn't yeah. played, you know, like a yeah. like a hard sci fi. So yeah. yeah, and they go back and try it, like you said with Alien Ruth and it's, <laughs> I can't even get it out of my mouth, and it doesn't do so well. Yeah. Well, I think also, you know, like the more understanding that we have of like the physical sciences also seems to make alien uh, or interplanetary travel seem, you know, much more imp- impossible. Right. I guess, you know, under. The best circumstances. So it's like, yeah, maybe there aren't aliens coming from, you know, distant stars and all that. Maybe not. And another thing could be like, we look at old movies, old movies, 1996, but it's 20 years old at this point. Um, But we look at the technology that is uh, what represents alien technology in old movies like this. And we're, while it doesn't look like this, it's almost things that we're kind of getting to the point of us ourselves creating. Our technology gets to a certain point where we're not so interested in like what alien technology can do because we're kind of getting to that point, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. So we're, you know, aliens kind of don't interest us in that regard anymore. Yeah, you'd have to do something like really outside the box. Like yeah. an alien visits Earth and it's a bunch of like rocks. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you gotta go backwards. Yeah, you gotta really yeah. base level aliens at this point. Yeah, we gotta go back to the anal probing of cows and whatnot. Like right. that was the thing, right? Like that's scary, right? Yeah. You know, the Millennium or not Millennium? What was the uh, Whitley Strieber book that he uh, was abducted? Oh God, what was the hell was that called? They made a new movie with Christopher Walken, where he's in a cabin and the aliens come down and take him away. And uh, oh, what's it called? Christopher that? Walken alien oh, movie. Damn it. I have not. I not heard of this. Come to me all of a sudden. I'll blurt it out in the middle of this podcast. Um, do we uh, do we believe in aliens around the table? What do we? I'm going with thoughts. No. You're going with no. no. I mean, okay, so the question of are there other forms of life in the universe, or are there visitors to Earth? Uh, the, uh, are there visitors to Earth? No. I'm talking about uh, aliens no. and spaceships. No. No. Visitors to Earth, no. Other life in the universe, yes. Yeah, yeah. Other life yeah. agreed. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Visitors Just Earth, the no. probability is yeah. Yeah. on its side, definitely. <sighs> yeah. Welcome to Sean? Star Talk Radio. <laughs> I'm hoping. Uh, my hope yeah, lives hoping. on. I'm hoping. It's gonna be, yeah, like well, I said, it's going to be a great day when the alien ships finally come down. It's gonna <laughs> You'll be, be awesome. like, I'm vindicated. It's just, yes, something. Is, it's, because it's, it's the only thing I think at this point, aside from like, and this is uh, not meant to be political, but aside from like us getting nuked or something like that, it, it would be, it's kind of the only thing that would just make me stop and go, wow. Like a big event like that. I mean, I think the last thing is big events like this now are, are terrorist attacks, like mm-hmm. on a huge level. That is the kind of thing that makes you stop and just sit and stare at a TV just in wonder of huge things that can happen to us. And aside from that, I can't see anything really that Zombie would be on. I mean, I mean, sh- sure. Be glued to the TV to yeah, I mean, I would be too, but it's not like it's, it's, but that's kind of like, I feel that's like on the ground. So you like want them big, 
You want them to already be here, or you want them to show up? No, I want them to show up. Okay. I want I want uh, the I'm, ships I'm coming thinking, in. I'm thinking you want it to be like Abyss style, like they're all under the ocean. No, I want <laughs> oh, uh, I want sign style. I want the weird lights. Vomino's children. Vomino's yes. children. Vomino's children. I want that. That's what I want. I want awe. On the edge of terror, but not yes. terror, which is what we get now. That's exactly we, uh, what I want. I don't want the terror, yeah. but I want the awe on the verge of like, uh, uh, what's going on? What's going to happen? Yeah. I want great TV. So you want to know that you can kill them with water before they get here. Yeah. And yet they still come to a planet 75% covered in water. Yes. Oh, yeah. I will arm up when the aliens come. Big like, yeah, I'll fight in that this yeah. This will be awesome. Just spritz them. Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. So, in the arrival. <laughs> this movie. Yeah. No, this is good, though. It's yeah. Kind of, yeah, discussion. I'm sure we're going to have more of it as we get into this. Uh, so, the arrival has Charlie Sheen. Uh, so, he discovers the, sig- the signal. Yes, and tries to report it to his, you know, his superiors, which is Ron Silver. Who yes. like it, does Ron Silver play uh, good guys? Good at all? guys? No. no, no. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure he has. What and then you? people were probably expecting a plot twist that he was a bad guy in that movie where he played a good guy. They're like, kid's going to reveal he's right. a it's villain. Like, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like expecting well, Sean Bean to die in something. Yeah. 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 Point. Yeah. It's like, when's he die? Yeah. When does Ron Silver become a bad guy? It is unnerving to see Ron Silver without his beard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think he had to because of the mustache part. Right. Yeah, I think that's the whole yeah. point of him not having a beard earlier in the movie. Yeah. 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 It's got to be. Yeah. It's very odd when we see <laughs> uh, his doppelganger in Mexico because the movie does take a detour there at some point. It does. But yeah. There's like, did they really even explain that? I think it was just that, like, it's hot there. Have, uh, <laughs> well, they, it's they hot mustaches. there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why they went there because that map showed that it was like right. really hot it's there. Yeah. Worse than oh, a no, sweaty yeah. upper lip. The, yeah. uh, no, I meant the the reason why there were two. Uh, Ron oh, Silver's. gotcha. Because, because the oh, machine. They, they ran out of uh, human designs. They only had so many. <laughs> Basically, yeah. It, yeah. They can only three D print like yeah. thirty types. <laughs> <laughs> they have a certain amount of cookie cutters. And that's it. Yeah, that was just a really yeah. odd and not quite well developed. I uh, personally thought. You know, subplot where it's like you could do something with this, right? That this is the same guy who somehow made it to Mexico and, you know, speaking mm-hmm. the language. And it's like, oh, my God, obviously there's something really weird about him. But <laughs> they just kind of, yeah, he's there and then they dispose of that idea. Yeah. Um, well, they use it a little bit more in one of the more memorable scenes as yeah. far as the skin grafting of the aliens goes. <laughs> right. Um, it just gives Charlie Sheen a big head. But this is, okay, so it is an alien film and eventually there are aliens in the movie, but mm-hmm. it does take a substantial amount of time, it seems like, uh, getting to that point. We're looking at the running time afterwards. Did you figure out what this was? Oh, what it ran? Mm, let's see. Okay, we don't know. And we're going to go with two and a half hours. Yeah? <laughs> That's what it felt like. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Uh, ooh, hour and 55 minutes. I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> well, what did you think it was? Uh, hour 45, hour something or other. I oh, didn't no, remember. I mean, the running time is fine. It just, it's one of those movies that kind of ended up feeling like it was you know, taking a while getting yeah. to its destination because yeah. the first two-thirds of it? No, at least half. Yeah, first seems hour. seems like it's devoted to the idea of, you know, um, you think it's a, a relatively small-scale film. Film yes, where Charlie Sheen has heard a and the government is shutting him down, and he's going to do his damnedest to find the signal again because it means contact with a another intelligent life form off of Earth. Yes, right. He does lots of dramatic wheeling around in his office chair. Yeah, he does. in the beginning like when he's. It. There's lots of phase one, yeah. phase two. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the camera work when there, he's good, that's going along with them as they just collide in to look at a computer. I mean, you can't do much. There's a red just, phone. You can't. There is. You can't do much. <laughs> you got to make it exciting to have guys sitting around looking at computers and yelling out this kind of like uh, phase two. Yeah. All right. Confirm phase, phase two. two. Yeah. Buttons. You got to yeah, exactly. type a lot of stuff on the keyboard. Yeah. And you got to make the that in the nineties. A exactly. computer in yeah. the nineties. Yeah. Not yeah. even look cool. It. It's just fucking green words on a screen. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got to make it look cool. So you got to have them on wheelchairs or a wheeled chair. Get the camera. Going. God, if they were on wheelchair, oh, oh, wheelchairs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They just do wheelchair races. And make so right. Bored. His and his all, legs are jacked arms because of different reasons. 
that would make Charlie Sheen sweat, though. In, in this movie. <laughs> it would, but that's how he that's how he fits in later on with the aliens because his legs were broken in an accident and they're already looked that way. Better, better, right? movie, yes. better movie, better yeah. movie. Yeah, this is a very moist movie. Oh, very, <laughs> indeed, he's very yeah sweaty. Yeah, Charlie it's Sheen balmy. sweats. <laughs> yes. All the goddamn time. <laughs> Whole movie. It's very hot. It's a heat so, wave. And it has to do with the movie. But like from true, but scene one, he's sweating though. Like yeah. before that's introduced yeah, as a plot movie. point, he's still oh, sweating. Credit, the opening the, credits were sweating on this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Sweating there was it after he had sex with his girlfriend, Terry Polo. He came out on the balcony. It was like. <laughs> that was the first movie. Oh, and she like, like rubs her hand all over his chest. I'm just like, oh, cringing yeah. when yeah. she does it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, he's so it's sweaty. Like, Damn, people. Yeah. Nobody's so around. <laughs> But he's presenting himself at that point. He's like, oh, <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I'm sweaty. You know, he probably starved himself for like three days for that scene, too, and they only shot from like right below his neck up, too. Uh, yeah. Oh. That poor, poor. What do you do for your art as an actor? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but the. Uh, so he gets a job once he's fired, because, I mean, they fire him from his position. Right, because right. he's uh, on JPL. something. Yeah, and they're just like, nope, shut him down. And so. He moves back into his house and he gets a job. But he's not a job as a, uh, or doesn't have a job as a, as a satellite dish repair man, right? Like, what was he doing? It's I'm like the phone company. Sure. It was the phone company, yeah. So he's just posing as a satellite dish repair yeah. man. Yeah. Well, oh, he's access. got the van. It's like sa- yeah. sa- something or other satellite. Yeah. yeah. Satellite repair. I thought he worked, maybe worked for it, but then he's always jacking into phones. I'm like, what the mm-hmm. company are you with? I suppose maybe one gives you access to the other. I don't know. Yeah. But it's like the Joker in the Penis Day. Yeah. All TV repair men can pops. Mm-hmm. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can jump all trades. Because you, you're yeah. an engineer. Exactly. Yeah. You know how to fuck with everything. That's what you do. Yeah. But he gets a great idea that he's going to. Uh, hijack all of his neighbor's satellite dishes and point them toward this star that was Brilliant. once making, mm-hmm. you know, this, uh, giving the signal. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he, he recruits uh, his neighbor. Kiki. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> but he does wear his hat, like, kind of sideways. It's this the is 90s. A, a streetwise teen from the hard, mean streets of L.A. who's out in Pasadena. I guess it looks like Pasadena. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that house style feels like yeah. Pasadena. And for some reason, which I cannot completely explain, maybe you can, he invites Kiki, uh, he catches Kiki, you know, looking in his window. Mm. And uh, then invites him into, hey, look at all the cool shit that I've got. I'm listening. You know, I've made a radio telescope. He invited him in because when he got stuck on the the lattice, he hurt himself. So he brought him in to patch Uh, him up. Right. Uh, Yeah. So look at this. I mean, that's like, why you're here. That's, that's, why here. Yeah. that's why I'm here. That's why Holly's here. <laughs> right. Okay, he came in through the ice pack at him. Yeah. One, one of these days, Holly's just gonna start making stuff up about a movie. And I we're did. Gonna, like, we're I did. Like, yeah. Remember the one we watched where I, I told you all the guy's name was Carlito and you all believed me for like an hour? I did not believe you. I was firmly against that guy being Carlito because that did not seem possible. And you were wrong. Yeah, no, I made that up. I like yeah. that uh, Kiki got one of the swears in this movie. That was cool. Yes, yeah. 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 He might be the only one who swears in this movie. What was this rated? PG-13? Something like uh, that? Yeah, because there was no fucks. In the 90s? No fucks, shits. Oh, there were shits. There was shits, was, yeah. yeah. But was, no side boobs. No side boobs. No, not really. No. Because it was the '90s, they were the the movies were turning a corner. Then yeah. in the '90s, they had no side boob, fewer fucks, and a greater mm-hmm. reliance on some kind of really weird and unusual musical instrumentation for their scores, mm. <laughs> which completely <laughs> dates the thing. Now is like it's got that '90s. I'm not gonna say stink. It's got a '90s odor. <laughs> it reeks so, a little a waft bit. of something <laughs> yeah. in there that we can place in the '90s. Yeah. That's what really makes this movie feel like an old movie, right? It really like, does. Yeah, it's the musical score. I mean, obviously the, the haircuts dress and the hair, the ladies' yeah. haircuts, the goatee, the goatee. Yeah, did, was it colored in? It looked really it looked, fake. It looked colored, but I, mean, I, I could tell it was real. But it still looked fake. Yeah, it's you know, Carlos Estevez. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's I know. probably all him. <laughs> People are going, who the hell is that? <laughs> Come on. like a known thing at this point? It was I from mean, Charlie uh, Sheen. That's Emilio Estevez, his brother. Yeah. So but it's they his used real it, name. Well, I, because they used it in his, uh, uh, Machete, Machete Kills. Kills. Yeah, yeah, they're like, and introducing mm-hmm. Carlos Estevez. Mm-hmm. Because, they, yeah, they introduced, mm-hmm. him as, introduced him as that because he, you know, yeah. he's Charlie Sheen. Right. <laughs> that's, that's why. Uh, <laughs> concurrent with Charlie Sheen's investigation, Lindsey Krauss is off uh, mm-hmm. as a scientist in the Arctic, where she finds a field of poppies yes. mm-hmm. growing on a nice, fertile 
grassy land in the middle of uh, all of the uh, the ice sheet up mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Ice sheet? Yeah. Glacier. Works for me. Yeah. The Arctic ice cap. Yeah, there it is. There we go. She's got those pitch black sunglasses too. Yeah. 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 Goggles going yeah. on. Yeah. 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 He liked those, man. He was That's just his thing. Yeah, well, because thing. I mean they were all the rage in the night. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently. I thought Oakleys some, were. Put some cool stuff. <laughs> those wraparound <laughs> Oakleys? Yeah. Did, Charlie Did we all forget <laughs> about blue blockers? <laughs> Come, on. <laughs> Come on. Did nobody watch infomercials in the nineties? Blue blockers. Oh, that was man. shit. I wanted a pair of those. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, they end up uh, both of them converging on Mexico for reasons. Well, why does she go to Mexico? She saw that global warming map. That oh, said yeah, it was the, really hot there. The projection yeah. of uh, where global warming will be in ten years from then. So she goes to Central America to study look the at, hotness. To study it. Yeah, but, she's, yeah. <laughs> she's letting off weather balloons and whatnot. She's going down there to study the weather, see what's going on. Get better data than she had. He's going down because he's pinpointed that there is not only he first of all gets a signal from space, mm-hmm. but secondly he gets a signal from Earth it's from back Mexico, back. Mexican City radio station. Yeah. So he's going to go down and find the radio station and try and find out like who's talking back to the aliens <laughs> in their own frequency. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. there's one radio station in Mexico because it sounds exactly like the radio station from Tremors Two. Remember, remember that, where they got the boombox that's always playing the Mexican music that gets eaten, taken underground? Oh. No, no, it's no. All no. Mariachi Just me. music? Yeah, but, yeah, I mean basically. Yeah. Is that all they play in Mexico? Uh, like we got to find this out. Have you I'm, driven? I'm not... Have you driven into Chicago listening to the radio? There's like eight of those stations. It's not just Mexico. <laughs> that's very true. 100 yeah. percent mariachi music. Not mariachi, Is there mariachi but it's mariachi rap. I want to. Damn, know. Colin. Wow. I, uh, well, I mean, can I, you I, rap to that? Music? I don't know. I'm curious. Like, what now. would it be like? Yeah, I know. We should maybe start a month. I was about to break into what I thought it would be. But I'm, in case, in case you don't know, oh, yeah, audience, I'm know. very white, so I'm not going to try that. I would offend two different nationalities in that regard, so I'll stay out of that one. I know where my limits are. It's good. The, uh, I mean, once we get to Mexico, does the, well, I mean, Charlie Sheen does gets pick sweatier. Up? He does. I mean, yeah, he so really much does. Sweatier. Yeah. Much sweatier. He's, again, that's where most of the moist, that's the concentration of moistness in this movie. So we think that there's a guy hired off screen to just kind of spritz Charlie Sheen Absolutely. with bottles Definitely. of Absolutely. glycerin or something like that. Definitely. Do the sweat stains on the shirt. I mean, this was, what was his popularity back then? It may have been a woman. I mean, or he may have requested like, no, I need her. She's Probably. I think, yeah. He could uh, definitely had that pull at this point girls. in time. Didn't he have like a. Another name for all the women. Didn't he call them like his angels or something like that, right? Yeah. That's the other one. Corey oh. Haim. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, let's Another weirdo from the, the same two. time period. Yeah. 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 I can't oh. recall. Oh, what were they? Uh, oh, I don't like know. Something his goddesses? Is that goddesses. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. <laughs> yes. that's it. Yep. Oh, this I'm is glad sad. I know that. Charlie <laughs> Sheen has devolved in, you know, like, this is, <laughs> this is always assuming this is how Charlie Sheen has always been. That he didn't yeah. gradually turn into what he was. You think he's always been like that? Always been a I meme? So. Like, yeah. or is he, Have you seen crazy? this movie? <laughs> he does a lot of wide-eyed... He's bug- The crazy I'm- eye. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. I mean, granted, he's playing a guy who's supposed to be like a conspiracy theorist, yeah. right? It's like he knows something and nobody else believes him, but he's always just panting, sweating, his eyes bugging out of his head, overacting, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Chad, yes. yeah, or yeah. you just can't take him seriously as an actor, both, both, because you know yeah. what you both. know about him. Both, there's that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. both, yeah, for sure. That's why it's like, why was this guy ever a movie star? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Major League, I don't know, the 80s. The eighties were a weird time. Yeah, how was he in uh, Wall Street? I never, I've never seen Wall Street. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's Platoon right. and everything. Yeah, that's where you go. oh, that's he was, right. He was legit back then. Yeah, he was. Right. Yeah. Like, but that was what a drug. good ten <laughs> years <laughs> before this movie, at least. You know, yeah, yeah. He could yeah. act. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was more his time, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Before that, yeah. Later on, yeah, went to went to see it. Yeah, a little bit. What you gonna do? Bad career choice. Well, and and we still have the horrible taste in our mouth of two and a half men, mm-hmm. you know. So that's yeah. a big part of it it's too. Still fresh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole what twelve years he was on that show. Oh, Lord. Yeah. 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 We have the really gaunt and sickly looking Charlie. Yeah. Sheen. yeah. When I because I had never watched the show and you know finally yeah. saw, I mean compared to you know yes mm-hmm. this is a healthy Charlie Sheen yeah. in this yeah. movie. 
Now he looks like a skeleton with some skin well, pulled over it. Hey man, either <laughs> you die HIV. a hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yes. Very, uh, Plus yeah, drugs and alcohol, you know. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> Not this very healthy, sweaty Charlie. Have <laughs> yeah. you seen this movie? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's also, because this is the kind of stuff that you bring into a conspiracy film in the in the 90s, uh, well, there's no men in black, for instance, in suits. The no. The G-Man thing. No, there's just... They kind of, there's the vague, we're going to take all your stuff kind of guys in suits for a little bit, but then they turn into gardeners. <laughs> you got to yeah. explain that, Charlie. What the hell do you mean? First, when they shut down Charlie Sheen's operation, um, they fire him and then they... Uh, Kane from Cuffs. I forget yeah, what his real name. That's yeah, that's what I know him from. <laughs> the, the I'm not. Allowed, we're not. I don't know. Every, most of the other people are gone. Am I allowed to talk about Cuffs now? Yes. Because that was like the first thing I ever brought up on this show four years ago. Is my no, love for Cuffs. Fuck everyone else. Cuffs is awesome. See. Right, yeah. So Cuffs. Who, which character from Cuffs? I haven't seen it, but you're talking. Oh, you haven't seen Cuffs? Character from this? He's oh, the bad uh, guy. He was the the, the gardener, the, the oh, guy with the creepy Leon smile. Leon Rippey. That's, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Universal Soldier and yes. you know, all that, yeah, yeah. In he Cuff, played. In Cuffs, Cuffs, he plays, he plays the hitman that has a picture of himself on his t-shirt. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. it's wonderful. <laughs> That's also where he gets shot in the head of uh, himself uh, on the t-shirt. It's great. He plays Kane in that. He kills Christian Slater's brother. Can't see the movie. And then you can. You can still see it. You can still see it. We got a month. I got another pick. Coming up, yeah, We're it's watching. great. You might watch cuffs, yeah. <laughs> probably not. Where was I going with that? Oh yeah, well, when they clean, they go in and they, you know, we're confiscating all your stuff because it seems at this point like somebody's trying to cover something up. They make the discovery and then they get shut down, and then guys in suits come in and start grabbing all their uh, research and equipment and start mm-hmm. taking it away. They and kill his partner. It's uh, Richard Schiff. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, I forgot he died. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So Show did. And then they unleash. I think at this point, is this the first uh, exposure we have to like alien, alien technology. technology in this movie? I think so. The alien killer sphere, the yep. singularity the, ball, yeah. yeah, that creates a black hole or something in your living room. Feels like it, yeah. Sucks Coming. all your shit into it. It's great. I mean, yeah. it's like a vacuum cleaner, but you know, I mean, it all the dirt just kind of. It reminded me of the episode of The Simpsons where they create the black hole in their basement so they just clean their house by throwing all their shit yeah. in it. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> it's very yeah. who, who came first? Who did it yeah. first? How come we haven't invented this amazing yeah. gizmo yet? Yeah. yeah. We got the Roomba. No uh, singularity. That's step factor. one, Colin. Yeah. yeah. Slow going. We'll the get Roomba there. is part one of this. Yeah. And then Roombas are just going to start sucking us all in. It'll turn into an episode of uh, Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah where get, they get sucked up by the vacuum. Yeah. 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 Oh, Colin man. has no idea what we're yeah. talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's wonderful. They all live in vacuums at the end. It's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 It sounds like wonderful. <laughs> That's a great show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I feel like we're, we're just overtaking Colin a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I have no I idea. Don't, now you, the cultural reference you points children, have changed. <laughs> right, the, yeah, it's all shifted. Colin, how do <laughs> yeah, you feel about this? <laughs> I'm learning things every week. It's an amazing uh, opportunity to be here. Uh, so the, uh, the G-Men, or whatever, Charlie Sheen yeah. goes to Mexico and checks into a hotel where, in another very uh, wet scene, uh, he's taking a bath. <laughs> the, the ceiling's leaking. The walls are not sweating. They're running. They're crying water. at this point, yes. And so let me get this straight. Oh. The uh, Which we come to find out, the alien hitman is going to kill Charlie Sheen. With a bathtub. By wetting the floor of the the floor above him mm-hmm. and dropping a cast iron tub through the ceiling onto him while he's bathing. And timing it perfectly that right. way, too. Because mm-hmm. he knows when he's bathing. Yep. Which mm-hmm. is creepy. Yep. Well, that means aliens, he... We don't know what the extent of it is. That means he had to know how right. long it would take that tub to fill up and overflow to the point that the floor would get weak enough to crush him. That's right. a lot of legwork. Yeah. 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 Or just alien smarts. Could be alien smarts. Maybe. We have no evidence in this movie <laughs> that, yes. that they have... It's not true. Test yeah. We don't one. technically know that they're intelligent beings. I mean, they have built some stuff, but... Yeah, but well, yeah. they are running around in human suits. We find out the guy Very like true. the big reveal of this alien, uh, you know, after Charlie Sheen survives yeah. the uh, the assassination attempt and chases the dude into the like lowest budgeted a Day of the Dead street parade. That was like eight people in that yeah. parade. <laughs> eight people, one giant skeleton. Yeah. Oh, I did like the giant skeleton. Yeah, uh-huh. it did look cool. Yeah, I like that. It's like in the world's smallest Mexican street, also. Right? It's like an alley. It's, an alley. Yeah. it's a yeah. parade in an alley, is what it's it is. It's not much. But what is it that finally tells the viewer that, oh my God, these are aliens? Their knees bend backwards. 
Yeah, he, he his knee has been backwards and he jumps up over the building. That was the, so, uh, that's our first kind questions of... about this then. So, <laughs> I mean, just because your knees bend backward, does that somehow give you better jumping agility than I have with my knees bending forward? There's got to be a technical term for this, but <laughs> right. Can't Sean's trying like to test it out. Sean, yeah, right now, behind <laughs> the bar. Sean's trying to achieve. I'm trying to imagine. He's trying to. He's trying to achieve goose like. legs right now. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Like, you can do it both ways. It'd be too. exactly the same, wouldn't it? No, I maybe, maybe like not. You have a springboard action going on because you're propelling the front part of your body and your weight. I can do that this on. way. I don't think it matters. Ever, you could do that yeah. shooting yourself backwards. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. That's I have a really stupid, like, biology question. Is there any animals off the top of our head that we know bend, have legs that I, bend that yeah, way? I think Because uh, that, would, that would, you know, I think, uh, do they, but does it help them jump? Like flamingos or like, something? There's yeah. Flamingos do too, but. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh Someone's diagramming this right now. He's I think breaking out the... If you think about it, I think it's in the way, in the direction that we, in which you get propelled, mm-hmm. depending on where. Because if you're, the knees are bent the way we are, you're more likely to be propelled backwards. Okay. If they're bent the other way, I think... That's what I just propelled said. Propelled like forward. Ago. Yeah, <laughs> but I hadn't figured it out yet. So <laughs> is, yeah, okay. Right, the weight's more up front, and you're... Yes. Right. All right, then I agree with what you said earlier. Yeah. And so that, I'm that with seems you on to be yes. Okay, so we, we agree. It's, it's totally possible that you could catapult yourself up three stories onto a roof of a building. They're also aliens. From Charlie Sheen. Yes. No, we, this is for just for the purposes dumb. of no. this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, it, but they're aliens. The point is that they should just be able to do that the regular way. We like are thinking aliens. way more about this than the writer yeah, director of this yeah, movie ever did. It's cool in a movie. They're just like, what it. if their legs are backwards? Yes. Yes. Done. What's a really Prince. quick way we can show on screen that this person is not human? Yes. Invert their knees. Backwards legs. That's it. Yeah, because done. they need to have their alien somewhat different from any other alien that's come before it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's striking, right? The image of a guy with his legs bent backwards, I suppose. Until they start running, then it just looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is because of, like, early or mid-90s CGI, right? We hadn't perfected There's also, the, yes. You know what the thing that but, always amuses me about, like, when you look back at, like, older movies, right? Like... The, there's a certain, so like 80s style practical effects people try to replicate now. Mm-hmm. On purpose, yes. Where are the mm-hmm. people trying to replicate the shitty CGI <laughs> of like the 90s? Like, you know what? We, we <laughs> talked we about Alien there. Resurrection, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it was. Uh, resurgence. Wow, I just went completely there. Oh, like Independence Day Resurgence. Resur- yeah, there you go. There that's you what go. I meant. Yeah. Alien Resurrection. We got you. Yeah. But they had, I mean, that's another movie. I mean, of course they had, what was the budget of that one? It had to be like a hundred oh, yeah. million. But they had obviously better people working on it. But those effects were like, those are really good. You can still tell it's a 90s movie, but those are really good effects. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. There's nobody trying to evoke nostalgia for the 90, the terrible 90s, 90s CGI. No. You know what I mean? It's time for you to step up to the plate, Colin. <laughs> I think we're still yeah. too close yeah. to it. <laughs> how, how hard can it be? You just got to wash out your effects and blur the shit out of stuff. They warp. They, the warp. they, warped. they actually warped. <laughs> oh, to the make, screen warped, instead of so, right, <laughs> trying to do some effect where his face warped, they just warped the screen. Yeah. Like, ah! There was so many fade to blacks in this movie, too. It was like it was written for TV with act breaks in it. That's what it felt like fade to blacks yeah. for no reason yeah. other than we don't know how to get to the next scene <laughs> i feel like it was shot for tv too or is that just me it, no i felt like it yeah it did it, it was written to act breaks i could it really feels like it was i don't know because I, the first time i ever came across this was i mean this was on tv by the time i saw it i mean and i saw it a lot when i was younger it was probably running on uh, hbo at this point mm. so it was a constant thing around at that point so i don't know i don't know I don't know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big man to me, it didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I just sometimes talk and don't know where I'm going. <laughs> so reel me back in. Okay. Sorry, well, I'm gonna. Okay. The next big plot point in the movie is we find the hidden satellite dish, which with the aliens are using to communicate with uh, the, their spacefaring yes. cousins. Yes, so. Charlie Sheen had to draw it on paper to figure out. <laughs> Hey, that's a satellite dish. <laughs> yeah, even the though he, even though he's been working with satellite dishes his entire career, right. that's for the audience to, right. to the point that he's been neglecting his girlfriend. That's how much time he spends with yeah. these satellite dishes. Yeah. But because yeah. they think the audience is dumb, they're not going to understand that the little structure outside of the building is the satellite dish, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. maybe people wouldn't have got that back then. 
Well, there was a couple things I was not entirely clear on. Maybe you can help me out on this also. Sure. The so the satellite dish turns out to be the on the top, like the whole facility is actually a subterranean alien base that goes down many floors, as you do in all these movies, right? Yeah. But actually I don't I'm not sure if I saw this prior to this movie because there's a lot of imagery that comes up in this sequence where he's crawling around in tunnels. And finding, you know, looking out over giant vistas of circular, you mm-hmm. know, buried spaceship like innards, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That reminded me of imagery in the uh, the first X Files movie, better executed. Mm-hmm. You know? But it was like, man, he's going down the ladders like they are. They're, you know, ca- crawling through the tunnels, and there's, you know, I mean, there was a lot of similar mm-hmm. uh, moments. Right. But in this main chamber. Of the this is where we get to see the aliens uncovered uh, for the first time. Yes. So they've got you know flappy whatever ears that cover their <laughs> yeah. like their skin head. flaps over yeah. their yeah. brain. Yeah, they're kind of gray, tall, skinny gray aliens with backward you know like ostrich or what would we say mm-hmm. pelican flamingo feet, something like legs. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are a lot of animals there. <laughs> One of birds. But in this scene, right there's uh, we're in the middle of some kind of I assume fuel chamber or something, right? There's these Feels like tubes it. that would mm-hmm. shoot down these capsules Bullets, yeah. into the center unit where a giant ball of green gas so uh, here's my gas theory. Yes. explodes from it. And we watched this for a while, and we watched Charlie Sheen's reaction to it. And I'm sitting there going like, I mean, this is visual storytelling, mm. but I'm not sure what the fuck is going on. Like, it's ah. not connecting with me. They're anymore. making the greenhouse gases. Yes. That's the greenhouse gas factory. Is what oh it is. shit! Because it was a green gas. Yeah. It was oh my god! Green yeah. Gas. yeah. <laughs> but should have got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that is exactly what they're doing. Like that's greenhouse gas. Factory. They are they yeah. are terraforming at this point. Yeah. But they're kind of doing it um, reverse from what we. I mean, what I know is terraforming, which I know from the Alien series, in which well, um, that's the only way I know it from. <laughs> I learned way later on that that's actually a real thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but the atmosphere processors. Yeah, that exa- yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. That they would go to plants that are uninhabitable for humans, terraform them, and make them habitable. Right. They're doing the opposite. They're releasing the greenhouse gases, trying to kill off the human race slowly but surely. Yeah. They're like, fuck They'll- you. You don't deserve to live right. here. We're going to kill you. Goodbye. So they are evil aliens. Yes. After yes. All. Because at this point, I believe that, you know, Charlie Sheen is pushing people out of elevators and doing all this stuff. I'm like, how do you know these aliens are really all that? You know, like, you can talk to them or something. No. No, no I think he's, he knows. They're aliens. we got to kill them off. He knows they're trying to kill them. He got the greenhouse gas thing. Mm-hmm. Like he saw, okay. So he, he understood. Right there it. Yeah. On top of it. He he's knew like, it. Okay. Because he yeah, met up with it. that chick that, that was looking into all the poppies and shit. Yeah. They had their little conversation. They had to They connect. figured it out. Yeah. Now, why isn't she in the movie longer? Like, they write her out at this point by yeah. killing her with a... Uh, so this is... They kill her by putting in her t- hotel room uh, live scorpions. Yes. Which are shot into her bed from a scorpion dispenser of a ceiling fan. Yeah. There's one on each blade of the ceiling yeah. fan, and they strategically is- drop off at different points in the room. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. I love it. This like, how do you... Scorpion this, the scorpion. <laughs> The scorpion acting in this movie <laughs> was actually really good. Like, yeah. there's one point where one comes around the corner, kind of hesitates and peeks, and then comes yeah. around the rest of the way. It was great. Oh, yeah, fantastic. We gotta find <laughs> out really if there's well. a scorpion. Like IMGb uh, page. Yeah, well, I mean, same scorpions from Hook. Yeah, yeah. I'll call yeah. it now. I'll call it now. Same, same scorpions from Hook. Movie scorpion family dynasty. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Should we? I'm telling you, this is a movie. So this is a documentary. Yeah. This Absolutely. is a documentary. Yeah. 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 The, Absolutely. The animals of Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Genealogy. Of yeah. Famous How many animals of them are related. Yeah, that you never knew. Gotta yeah. be. It's like I've been raising scorpions for fifty years. <laughs> There's like one family yeah, that breeds movie scorpions. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Betty Davis didn't like these scorpions when I brought them on the set. Like in 1953. <laughs> this would be fascinating. Do you think right. that? Do you think that scorpion that peeked around the corner has like a reel? Do you think he has like a reel of his all of his oh, yeah. movies cut together? This one's Jonesy. Do you think he's you an agent too? Yeah. Here, yeah, take a look. Go around corner. Yes, 53 IMDb credits. He's very popular. You like him, but he costs a lot. I wonder what his top three in IMDb are. Like, what are his uh, right. top roles? 
Is the guy seen a little picture called Hook? <laughs> You've seen Jonesy. Where you didn't use his from the deep south. <laughs> yeah, where else, else are you going to get Where else are you going to get scorpions? <laughs> right. They all come from the south. This is what the happens. The southwest. This is when you got gators. Do you think there. it's a SAG card? <laughs> oh, definitely. It's a tiny one, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Do, oh, do you think he gets, movie. like, screeners of movies, too, because he's a SAG member? That would be, yeah, they're like... This is not viewable to humans yeah. for Jonesy only. It's like a little tiny copy. That would be, yeah. Just, uh, he's got a, now we're getting into the ridiculous where he's got a little DVD. A little, right now. Now, now we are. Now he's got a little DVD player, and he like, but he doesn't put it in with his claw. He sticks up his tail and he goes into the slot. Oh shit! This is his family played the motion capture scor- scorpions for Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh my god! Like that one's walking around with a little cane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the poor bastard? Let's put the dots on a motion capture scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> Mocap scorpions. Yeah. Oh, that's oh wonderful. my god. <sighs> Jones oh, won't do those. That's hurts. for the kids. That's for that new Stop technology. It. Yeah. Stop it. Wow. That's that's a, well, that is a good trait. But he the, was in the original Clash of the Titans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, he had to teach them how yeah, to Yeah, there's act. scorpions all over her room, and there's she has like a like a ton of close calls. Like too many. Too yeah. many to right. be believable. Well, you like suspense, you do it twice yeah. max, and then yeah. you know, third time you do it. But like the most, the least interesting one is the one that does her in. Like the most typical one, there's two of them in the bed. Which I want to know, like, was it teamwork? Did they work it's together like on that? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Coming from the side to get the big yeah. toe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They yeah. always have to go for the big toe. Yeah. Well, we the most exciting part of the uh, well, she gets killed off screen or something. She sits up, Ooh, right, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, but uh, Carlos has to escape from the alien base. <laughs> And he witnesses the aliens transmogrify into humans. They have some technology. It looks like uh, the, the Star Trek uh, teleporter. It looks yeah. like a desk lamp. It looks like a giant desk lamp. True. Basically. Yeah, the yeah. pulsating desk yeah. lamp. Mm-hmm. You stand under it and you become human. And he says, well, they're looking for me. If I stand under it, I can become human. I can be Mexican, too. <laughs> there you go. And we, and we get Carlos. <laughs> we, it's Carlos. This it's, is the actual Carlos. This is yeah. It's amazing because instead of having an actor come in and just play, <laughs> uh, you know, the Mexican Charlie Sheen, they actually put prosthetic makeup to make Charlie Sheen look like a Hispanic male. Yes, yes. he's when in brown face. He's a Hispanic yeah. male. Yes, he's That's in a... sweaty brown face too. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> like it's... he's sweating even in prosthetics. <laughs> yeah. Right. Not I'm even sure. that could cover it up. So they're melting <laughs> off of him. This is what gives him away, his mm-hmm. sweating. It is a sweaty movie. It, it's mm-hmm. very, it's so yeah. sweaty. We can't say it enough. It's yeah. very so sweaty. sweaty. Yeah. It's but very moist. I was disappointed in that it looked like he only got uh, like skin covering his face. Whereas I thought it would just cover his whole body. Which his is what hands, it does for the not his hands. Right, but it feels yeah. like, I mean, the when he, whoa, He's wearing what? a jumpsuit. He doesn't need it. I guess not. <laughs> I want him to come out like... Two sizes too big for a human being, though. Yeah. He's got, like, big pan. He's just like, ah! Like, they built a human on top of him. Basically. So like, double human. Yeah, that's yeah, what I want. I got you. Overly sized. He does have a big head when he comes out. He yeah. 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 He's schlepping all that uh, prosthetic. I thought yeah. for some strange, stupid reason that he'd go <laughs> into this and be turned into an alien or something, right? Oh. Like, it, it's like, no, you're I a human, so, so we're going to yeah. turn you into an alien. The aliens go in and come out humans. Oh, that would have been great. I thought that too. I was a little disappointed. That would have been cool. And then we see when we see him escape. My, I love that. I love how quickly he gets out of the brown face. But I love that he stands under a waterfall and rips it all off his yeah. face. And the wet, the wet sounds in that oh, were really gross. So like the foley artist was so squishy. really the punching it on that. Is, uh, wonderful. Yeah. A lot of raptor noises. A lot of sque- uh, uh, squishing noises and whatever. Yeah. I can't tell That's if you're great. saying it's wonderful without a hint of irony. Or oh no, sarcasm. there's much irony in that. Okay. I know. Yeah. I sometimes ride that line. But now I'm being uh, sarcastic. Yeah, they hit the squishes really hard in this movie. Oh yeah. As bad as the squishy feet from last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you got to keep these guys employed and sometimes they want to make their mark. He's got to put that in his reel. Mm-hmm. He's, he's going to have a scene in his reel of Charlie Sheen pulling skin off of him. He's going to gonna punch up the squishy sounds. That's yeah. going to get him some jobs. <laughs> yeah. That was you think they do that? You think they get their scenes like for their reel and they're like, we're going to amp this up just a little bit so they can hear it so they know. I would. Why yeah. not? Right. I mean, yeah, you got to show off was yeah. why you're showing off. You know? yeah. 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 I need that yeah. squish. Yeah. Well, uh, Charlie Sheen is, does escape. He does. Fear not, he survives this encounter with the aliens in the hive. 
<clears throat> Speaking of the aliens in the hive. Wait, Sean has his hand up. Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Disappointed that the aliens get alien guns, but we don't get to see them I shot. They were alien knives. They were like you spikes. They, they looked were like, like guns. They like they had spikes on one end and then like pistol when they use on the them other later, end. They're, they're slicing with them. Are they? They're no, that, no, 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 they're not slicing. They never slice the with them. claw thing. That wasn't that what they handed out in the. No, they had guns. Those were the guy has like a sickle later on I that think he's that's using. What they handed out. No, no, there was no, like a spike. It was a spike. No, they were guns. They held them like this. The spiky part went over this, and the barrel came out the other end. What? And not one of them ever what? shoots. Not one of them that's ever why shoots. I'm, saying. I'm just okay. But they don't get the opportunity. All right. I'm disappointed there I'm was no give that alien gun shooting. I can't prove it, but all right. You look back, listener. You tell me. <laughs> Somebody will tell us. Uh, so he escapes and then returns to America, because now he has... With a Mexican circus, is what he says later on? A rodeo. A rodeo. Uh, Does he have evidence at this point? He's seen it with his own eyes, yes. and he's got to convince the powers that be. So his method is to basically record a conversation with Ron Silver, because mm. Ron Silver, guess what, is an alien. The aliens are among us. The title of the movie says Arrival, but the Arrival has happened before the movie started. Yeah, it's a whole different movie. Doesn't quite yeah. make sense. <laughs> yeah. No. They're here. They arrived God knows how long ago <laughs> yeah. because we were fucking up the ozone layer. They said, we're going to do it for you. And yeah. Fuck but, your planet I mean, over. Could they call it the arrived? Doesn't. Yeah, right. The acknowledgement. We're acknowledging they're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The acknowledgement. Yes. <laughs> well, this leads to a big showdown where we have uh, Charlie Sheen, his girlfriend, his uh, sidekick neighbor, his streetwise sidekick neighbor. That's uh-huh. right. And the bad guys are en route. And so where do you go? You're going to go to a giant satellite dish. There's a lot of giant satellite dishes in this movie, but this one. That's where he works. We're going to get to and hack a domestic Signal. satellite. Yes. And put this video on, like, you know, we're going to hack the planet. Of Ron Silver admitting something. Yeah. Right. Because out of context. Right. That's true. No one would really make know. too much sense. No. And it's not like right. earth shattering news. Right. <laughs> it's not right. earth shattering to view and be like, hmm, I get it. Aliens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would not make that connection. No, no. it's not a thing. No. Yeah. They're aiming for a payoff that I don't think they quite uh, they earn. earn. Yeah. 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 Not at all. But I mean, the big showdown involves liquid dry ice because these uh, aliens who like the greenhouse gases and they like it to be really hot on the planet can't stand the cold, much yeah. like the sh- the signs aliens can't stand water. Mm. It's always mm-hmm. something, right? It's something mm-hmm. stupid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, we like hot. Ah, cold. I got to run away. Their speak yeah. is kind of similar, too. Yeah, uh, the clucks. And... <laughs> <What was that? laughs> that's, tell me that's not exact. That's not exactly no, that what he does. Spot on. That was pretty spot on. That's yeah. pretty much it. Clicks and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah it's Clicks like some pygmy tribes. I've heard there's actually like tribes in Africa that, oh, like that e- communicate. Ethi- it's very yeah. Ethiopian. It's yeah. Starvin' yeah. Marvin. Yeah. Hey? South, South Park, Starvin' uh, Marvin. Ah. Yeah, like, oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, are you mocking me, Colin? <laughs> I feel <laughs> something there. So, no, no, no irony or sarcasm. So, the, uh, yeah, I mean, what? We freeze the bad guys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, drop the. This is after the reveal that Kiki is, in fact. Oh, shit. That's right. Yeah. Because one of these characters is going to betray him. Right. Because the aliens show up somehow. Yeah, because they've they know they're him. there. They've yeah. said they're watching him. There's constant shots of the girlfriend with the shifty eyes looking mm-hmm. like they she hold made a phone, on right? too long on her looking all suspicious like. Yeah. She mm-hmm. made a phone call in the car. I yep. said we're going in. Yeah. She hugs him and then just kind of lingers. Stares off. Yeah. Yeah, they held on hands. that shot for a yeah, while. Like, yeah, they did. The but like, it turns out it? it was all a red herring because Kiki. The little bastard was actually <laughs> Colin turns quick. The, the turncoat. Yes. Like, uh, when, uh, you know, he's an alien. Yeah. Alien. Let, yeah. let the Ron Silver into the building. Yeah. Yeah. Ron Silver takes his tape. He's like, no. Yeah. Shuts you know, the you're off. not putting this on the air. No. Now we know that humans know about this. No. Yeah. Then liquid nitrogen. And freeze liquid nitrogen. Freeze and him. the gigantic singularity ball. Yes. The big one. That's how you clean it. Well, I mean, obviously, if you're in a gigantic telescope, you know, radio right. telescope, big room. you got to use the, yeah. Mm-hmm. got to use the big one. And how do you escape the, uh, the, the giant satellite dish? Do you telescope? walk out the front door, Colin? 
I mean, I wouldn't, but that's just me. I would go on go, go up and onto the satellite dish. You yeah, go up, but how? How would you get on top of the satellite yes. dish? Through a complicated <laughs> maze of pipes? <laughs> With a ladder <laughs> attached to them. Yeah. Yes. Because apparently there's only one door into it. The bad guys have rammed their <laughs> van <door>. into it. <laughs> And then we're frozen by the liquid nitrogen. And Charlie Sheen helpfully exclaims, well, we can't get out that way. Well, clearly you could just climb over. Well, okay, what are we? Sure, I mean, well, this is the only door. I don't know. Maybe it is the only. It's not the only it can't be the, door. Yeah, it can't be the only door. Right. So, yeah, we have to climb up through the satellite dish. Now, I want to know how you get down off of it. I'm sure there's there. a ladder off the side. I don't think so. They're. We don't thing. ever actually see them get down over, yeah, do we? It's a convex, <laughs> a convex concave. Concave People dish. will know at some point <laughs> <laughs> to come up here and raise a ladder off a fire, fire truck right. or something to get us down. Meanwhile, that kid's going to go get a hundred more aliens to come kill his ass before he can yeah. upload a tape somewhere. Yeah. That kid's exit from this movie was the most laughable moment of this entire movie. Why? Because he runs off into the desert on his ostrich legs, but they they only had the money to show it for like 10 seconds, so you just see bushes covering his legs the rest of the way when he's running. And then it's just a kid running. Yes. Then it's just a kid running away in bushes. Special effects guys only had to deal with about... 30, yeah, and even the then, they yeah. didn't do it well. Yeah. No, like Vaseline no, smudged yeah. all yeah. over. I'm saying, is it just the quality of 90s CG work or something? Yeah, you know, it's bad. Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, is, they didn't quite have it yet. Right, not ready for prime time. No, nope. but they used it all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, which is now, yeah, that's what they had. Can't go yeah. back and watch these movies. That's did what, did, people, did we all think that that was something else back then? Were we watching these movies at the time, going, whoa? Yes. Yeah. Ex- I mean, I mean, we hadn't seen mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. um, like when the N64 came out, people thought that was like revolutionary graphics. Very and true. go look at that now, and everything's fucking blocky and right angles. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really weird. I mean, I remember thinking the same thing about like blue screen work, right? Mm-hmm. And in the generation prior, is like you'd see the lines around stuff and mm-hmm. go like, hmm, I wonder if we're going to be able to do better than that in the future. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's as good yeah. as it can go. And then, you know, CG eclipsed it. Now you go back and it's like, yeah. it's clearly a blue screen, you know, mm-hmm. shot. But I still think in some ways, you know, I mean, I can forgive that because it's, it means t- like the quality of blue screen work looks basically the same for see, yeah. 20 years of <laughs> yeah. movie making where CG changes so much like, and it's so much better now. I mean, now you're looking at like the Jungle Book, right, or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's an example of like that looks good now. Yeah. Compared to like this stuff is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ruining movies. Of, I just remember like Escape from L.A. came out the same year as The Phantom Menace, oh, and it was yeah. like The Phantom Menace Whoa. was like supposed to be really same year. Wow. Really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And the CG in that is some of the most Escape from L.A. is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh. Wow, kind of blew my of mind with that. Effects right? no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Not the movie. That should be on the free show someday. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, 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 I really should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, in the end of this film, uh, hero Charlie Sheen and his girlfriend have survived, uh, and they broadcast this message to the world. The message being the recording of Ron Silver sideways admitting to there being. Aliens on Earth. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope. No. No. That doesn't come up at all. No. No, it's yeah. sideways. Like he yeah. says, like your planet. You know, but like, you can't even like to an outside person who doesn't know. There's like, like aliens. He kind of says something like, "If you don't want your planet or take care of your planet, then we'll." But. So it could just be the JPL, the Jeff Something, Paul yeah. Mm-hmm. saying we'll like, take it from you. Regular people say that now. If you don't treat your planet well and, you know. He's just of another political party. It's it, not yeah, a, kind of, yeah. Aliens. I know. It doesn't have the impact that no. they, they, that they want. Yes. Right, yeah. And it, and that's the fade out of this movie. You're yeah. like yeah. kind of, huh, uh, okay. All right. mm-hmm. Did you guys get the impression, because this is a thing I've always thought about David Tui movies Tui, 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 Tui movies Tui. that I've seen prior to this that, um, well, let me ask it. I guess, like, do you think that he had any kind of, like, where'd the research go for any of this stuff? Or are you just making it all up? It didn't. Do you feel like he knew anything about 
NASA protocol and, uh, you know, any kind of background science. I think he knew film. about global warming or the fact that the Earth was heating up. But I think in yeah. broad strokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that might have been it. I think he knew those facts and then made an alien movie around it. Because that's really the only stuff you have to know at this point, is that the Earth is getting hotter. They know about global warming at this point. They pretty much assume yeah. that it's happening. Like he, he did the cliff notes on space and global warming. Basically, yeah. because he yeah, didn't need much. to know anything else yeah. for this. Like It's like, I here's something is happening. I'm going to write an alien movie about why that's happening. Here's mm-hmm. some satellite so all, terminology we can use. Right. Yeah. So all he really needs to know is that is that. Like, I mean, uh, he may know something about people who search space for uh, frequencies that are not of this Earth, but that's kind of a very vague, that's a basic thing, I think, at that point. He looked it up or something before. Yeah, and there's not much into it. In Warlock, it seemed like he knew more about, you know, obscure, like, 16th century witchcraft Mm -hmm. rites, which kind of gave that movie like a, huh, like this guy actually know something about right. this or look this up. Yeah. In here, it doesn't seem like he has as much room to play with because no. he spends so little time with NASA, and that's kind mm-hmm. of where it seems like he you know, did his research. Or his the girlfriend's like a banker, stock trader, something She's like that. Stockbroker, yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, this is exciting. <clears throat> and the rest of it's basically a man, you know, the the man who knows something, the Cassandra yeah. Complex, right? Where mm-hmm. I'm trying yeah, to yeah, warn yeah. you of the impending doom. Yes. <clears throat> no one believes And me. you don't really need a whole lot of research. No, it mm-hmm. doesn't seem like it for this. You know a few basic facts and that's about it. Yeah. I and wonder I wonder if Warlock maybe reflected personal hobbies more than, than this did. You know, this was just an idea for a screenplay, whereas Warlock, maybe he has... An like actual a, interest? Yeah, in, like it's something he's always been in interested that history? in. history? Yeah. Probably. That I think that makes a huge difference. At least mm-hmm. it shows more in that exactly than it does in this. Yeah, That's this right. he just want to make an alien movie. Yeah, possibly. I don't know. So it's his uh, eco eco warrior nineties eco warrior. Yeah. That's another thing. Do we still have those a lazy nineties eco warrior? It wasn't really trying movies. that hard. If it really was an eco warrior movie, is, uh, it would have been about Lindsay Krauss. Right. Uh, yeah. It was, so like, close, right? like was... this should have been her movie because, like, the, if the yeah. whole point was global warming, why are we following yeah. Char- Charlie Sheen's character? Yeah. Right? You know. That's why it feels really weird that yeah. they took her out. It's like, it's yeah. yeah, get rid of the girlfriend. She should have been the alien turncoat, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of the the kid, right? Who you didn't need at all. Mm-hmm. Just have the girl become. Did you want to watch a movie without uh, a cute black kid making quips every now and again? He didn't even do that very much, though. No, he was hardly in it. Very short. But that's also very now that it's also dated. This is like very, very much so. Nice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> very <thing>. much so. <laughs> but then and, and make elevate the Lindsay Krauss character mm-hmm. to you know the um, second mm-hmm. well, I guess second lead after Ron Silver, whatever. You know, she was I mean, like, uh, yeah. <clears throat> she was first in the credits at the end of this movie, I believe. In order of appearance. Was it in order of oh, appearance? Okay, there you go. Ah. <laughs> yeah. all Damn it, anyway. Feel, it's all in time. She was the first. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess uh, that probably is going to wrap up uh, our initial go it, through yeah. of the arrival. Stay tuned, listener. We're going to go around the table and let you give our final uh, thoughts, mm-hmm. final reviews. We'll see how it stacks up. How many of the four of us loved it? I mean, you know what? We Did should... we arrive Wait. or are we departing this movie? <laughs> Man, yeah. Is that what we're doing or are we doing is it better or worse than Arrival? Oh. Is the Arrival better or worse than Arrival? Is that like our final thing? Or... We can add it into it. I yeah. think that's an yeah. easily answered question, but. All right. <laughs> uh, it might just be me. But before that, we have to uh, ask for Uh-oh. the mail to be delivered. And so that we're going to need Igor. Igor, bring us the gut dang mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thank you. Oh, oh, it's very uh, <laughs> uh, uh, energetic <laughs> with giving you that mail. That's right. Boom. Get so those here we sound go. effects. So uh, our mail. Can we get a horse in here? <laughs> <laughs> we want 
to hear from you, listener. You we let do. us know if we're doing a good job or not, because basically this is a social experiment. This whole podcast. No, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four people wasting their time. Is it worth it? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? We get to see awesome films. Every- is it worth it to listen to? That's what we want to know. Uh, so let us know how we're doing. Tell us, uh, give us questions or comments mm. about the uh, movies that we're watching. And we'll read them on the air like this. Where can they do that, Colin? Oh, sorry. That's right. Good God. On Facebook, <laughs> facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And the first comment comes to us from Facebook. This is Bobette Georgie Bobette. about the arrival. Says, I don't do alien BS. No, yeah. Whoa. Totes, Bobette. Is that it? Is that the is that, that's is that's that what it? she said? I don't do whoa. I don't do alien BS. She's vowing not She's to watch a the non believer. So you may not be listening to this show then. I bet we don't know. Well then we're gonna say a few things, Bobette. <laughs> Continue, Colin. About Terror Tract, <laughs> Dom Cree writes in uh, he's talking about Buff Bagwell here, who starred in yeah. uh, briefly in Terror Trek. <laughs> starred. Says, uh, yes, he starred, did. Starred. Uh, he Cameo. Was walked through. <laughs> Guest appearance. Yeah. He says uh, he was buff and obviously no longer the stuff. Uh, uh, he'll uh, always uh, be the uh, stuff uh, to me. The stuff. <laughs> when do we watch that movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, what were we, you? What was that? Huh? Uh, it's, up to, it's up to you to bring the stuff Larry okay. Cohen's the stuff to the, stuff. the Saturday Night Freak Show at some point uh, so that uh, brings us around to, to mailbag is done so now we're going to go around the room Colin! And, oh shit it's my turn what did you think of the arrival? alright my review of the arrival um, I went into it with high hopes because I had seen the movie before I saw it 20 years ago and I remembered being I had the, the takeaways that I had <clears throat> I remembered a room with uh, all the appliances spinning around, mm. but for some reason, in my mind, that was because he put together an alien device from <laughs> getting the signal from another planet, and then he created the thing. Wow! And you so watching it tonight, I was like, "That's a cool, that's movie. a more interesting <laughs> movie." <laughs> well, it's Contact, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Transmission. Oh, I want to watch Contact. And then <laughs> I remembered uh, not that their aliens had backwards facing light, but I remembered the sequence of going into the alien ship because at the time I recalled the sensation of being like. Wow, this movie has gone in a place where I did not initially expect that it was going to go. It's mm-hmm. a bigger, the scope has opened up, you know, significantly. Um, this time around, though, mm-hmm. um, I did not like the experience. I'll just say, like, it was, yeah, I think part of it is I can't take Charlie Sheen seriously. Is that the fault of the Charlie Sheen persona as we've come to be a, con- a become accustomed to him you know because i don't remember having a problem with him in the 80s and 90s when he was in theatrical films that you go to see uh so i don't know but now i mean just everything he did i'm like is he a bad actor like i don't believe him in Mm -hmm. any minute of this movie even when he's playing a bug-eyed conspiracy (laughs) lunatic which you know i mean at some point in which is real right up his alley yeah uh, he became, it's like, I still am not believing his performance here. Yeah, it's energetic. Uh, you know, it had to be like, he seems like he's committed in some way to doing it. Uh, you know, he's not just kind of like paycheck and whatever. Um, but yeah, I just didn't buy him. Um, you know, you've seen this type of thing now done, I think, better in years since. So this just kind of felt like they were hammering home points that have you know we're more familiar with it's like you could do shorthand here but you're taking the long way to explain you know how antennas work and alien <laughs> signals or how far away that you know <clears throat> which again at the time i think was new ish and now it's like we're just so overexposed yeah. to it can you hold that against the movie i think for a modern viewer i think you have to it's like you really can't go back again to this the cg work is shoddy yeah uh and uh hard to i mean yeah i mean i try to give these movies you know visual effects the benefit of the doubt where you like you know you have to look kind of look past i mean this is the way you get away with watching 50s movies now right mm. you see the claymation or whatever the ray harry house and stuff and you're like okay cg does it better 
but I'm looking past the visual effect to the intent of mm-hmm. what you were trying to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, get across in the scene. That's horrifying that there's skeletons skull- attacking this dude, you know, or whatever. Um, in this, I can't, I can't go past. There's like, because CG's so new, <clears throat> you know, so it's still, and so, I can't get past that. And sometimes in the 90s, the intent <laughs> was the CG. Look yeah. what we've created. Yeah. Yeah. This movie doesn't over rely on it. No. Though. It's kind of like it does it in a relatively subdued supporting thing. So, I mean, with restraint. But, you know, and again, you know, it, it was shocking at the time to see the aliens with the, uh, you know, backwards facing knees. You can't pull that off with a practical effect or do it any other way, really, aside from like some bad blue screen work mm. or something. So that was like, ooh. Um, and I guess I was, I expected more from David Tui. You know, going into this when Sean picked it last week, I'm like, ooh, it's a David Toohey movie, and I've liked so much of the stuff that he's done, and usually I give him the credit of being, like, the guy who seems to invest his movies, not necessarily with great dialogue or great uh, story structure, necessarily, but they seem like lived-in worlds, like he did internalize the world that the characters inhabit, and this one, either I'm not feeling it, or... It's, you know, because it's not interesting or he doesn't know it as well as he knows some mm-hmm. of his other yeah. um, creations. So I can't say that you have to see this movie. It's not bad enough to be funny, although it has some amusing moments. It's not good enough to be, you know, distinguished from other films in the genre. And uh, I can't talk about Arrival 2 there is there is a sequel an arrival to Charlie Sheen is not in it uh, and I didn't see it so um, I wouldn't recommend this one maybe the sequel is better maybe we should give arrival to a shot Sean shaking his head I can't remember it being uh, Sean uh, usually all about the sequels I know <laughs> and I thought about that today when I was talking to him like maybe I should have seen part two have I seen part two I think I've seen part two I would not recommend part two. Yeah, Yeah. it's clearly it was memorable. No, this it didn't get a part three. So there you go. His uh, critters and tremors movies are on like part six, seven. That's that's very true. Yeah. So uh, that's a. I think it was. um, I think the new arrival, which has some fantastic uh, first twenty minutes. Twenty minutes is great. great. So Mm -hmm. those first twenty minutes, although I'm not really keen on where it goes after that, but Mm -hmm. I would say based on those first twenty minutes, it's better than the arrival. No recommendation. Holly. Yeah, I'm going to have to pretty much agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Um, this, I, I I was looking forward to this because I, I thought, you know, 90s alien movie, Charlie Sheen, all things that I would enjoy and enjoyed watching growing up. But it just, it was so long. <laughs> <laughs> it was so long. I it was just poorly planned plot points that were just kind of strung together. I, I, I didn't feel it. There, there wasn't a flow to this movie. It was just, it was just kind of things were happening. I don't know. You know, like you don't really know entirely what's happening. You kind of follow the story, but you're like, I'm not sure what's going on right now. You get it, but you're just not sure what you're watching. It was just kind of boring. I mean, there was some fun, like Colin said, there was some funny parts. You got a couple yucks out of it, but overall it wasn't like, we weren't howling. We were just laughing at the ridiculousness of, you know, the sweaty Charlie Sheen, sweaty Charlie Sheen and the obviously horribly racist (laughs) prosthetics, but we didn't even delve into that. Like that subtext of like all the aliens are coming from Central America. Yeah. Mexico, Mexico, aliens, aliens kind of going in that. Maybe David too is a racist. Could be. Maybe pitch black takes on a whole new meaning. Whoa. When you look at it, <laughs> this is like, probably not true. It feels oh. like it's reading more. It's the it, it was cheaper to shoot in Mexico. Yeah, yes. and <laughs> well, it's, but and it's hot there. But yeah. Kiki, the black kid that turns on him, that was racist. Also <laughs> an alien. So two different types of brown people that are aliens that are turning on white people. Hey, so black people can be turncoats. Too. <laughs> that's, very, that's very true. Yeah. But yeah. the corporate guy <laughs> yeah. is always the evil white yeah. guy. Yeah, right? exactly. Yes. Never yes. the evil black cor- corporate yes. guy. No. <laughs> But yeah, overall, I, it was just kind of it. It was just kind of boring. Didn't really do it for me. Nothing was spectacular about it. The effects, nothing. I, I, I yeah, I can't say I would recommend it at all. 
Um, I would say Arrival is more entertaining. I mean, I, I agree with Colin. The first 20 minutes, entertaining. Not sure I enjoyed the whole movie, but it's a more entertaining movie in general. So I would go with that. There you go. Yeah, I, I can't recommend this movie. Uh, the, <laughs> the best I can do is go on YouTube and watch the scorpion scene and then maybe watch like Charlie Sheen and his brown face under the waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> like, But um, there was two really great lines in this movie that I wrote down. Uh, at the beginning when we see... Um, Lisa Cra- or what's it, Lindsay Krause, is that her name? Yeah. When she's talking about her greenhouse gas study, she says, I might as well be counting cow farts in Montana. <laughs> and that was pretty fucking great. That's pretty es- good. Especially because it was actually like relevant to the plot later right. on. So yeah. like it seemed like a throwaway line, but it like, wow. no, yeah. <laughs> That's peak writing at this movie yeah. right there. And uh when Charlie Sheen comes back from Central America and he's full on crazy <laughs> and he's wearing what looks like the duster from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, yeah. even though it's like hundred and five degrees outside. Yeah. Um he's he says, Actually I look like a can of smashed assholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I a wonderful line. No, I funny. feel that was Charlie Sheen's line. Yeah, yeah, like, that, no, I yeah. For this part. Um, I would like a gif of that. Someone wants to make a gif <laughs> yeah. of him saying that. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Like, right? Friday leaving All the work, time. I feel I like, like I can't smash that. Perfect. Yeah. Why is this not in gif form? Yeah. Yeah. Because you haven't made it. Uh, we will. But uh, we we laughed harder talking about like the scorpion acting oh, yeah. than we did at anything in this movie. Like it's there's this has been done so many ways better um, that I just and like it just feels so long that it's like I said just go watch mm-hmm. the YouTube clips. Uh, as far as 2016 arrival, I actually I thought that was the second that I had that as my second best movie of the year, um, and I think it's one of the best movies of the decade um i loved it i think it's a i, I love the director and i love his previous film so i would definitely definitely we're, we're recommend really it yeah yeah Villeneuve. yeah he i am very excited he's doing the blade new blade mm. runner movie because i mm-hmm. think it's it's definitely being set up for success it's the so the only reason i'm gonna see that movie yeah um so yeah i definitely recommend 2016 arrival yeah but not 96 right? no Nineteen. All unusual. <laughs> I, I know. Um, I think it can be best summed up in that the climax of this movie is a giant swirling ball <laughs> that vacuums up a room. That is. I mean, it's ba- that's that's it. That kind of says it all right there. And I mean, this there's problems with this movie. Um, it is. I mean, it's an hour and fifty five minutes. It is overly long, and the plot is tame compared to things we can watch now, or things that even came out back in nineteen ninety six. Um, it is a tad boring. Mm. Um, not even like Colin said, it's not even um, not even brought up by its ridiculousness because it doesn't get really that ridiculous. Charlie Sheen's got a few good wide eyed stares in this movie, but <laughs> other than that, it's not. Yeah, it's underwhelming in in the story. It's kind of also like okay, um, you know, they're trying to kill us with greenhouse gases. Like how? I mean, the projection is like ten years. Like. It it doesn't seem like a huge. There's no big threat in this. I don't think. Like it all seems like a gradual process to get rid of human beings, which doesn't seem all that threatening to me. Getting rid of us. Just they're gonna kill us off by the greenhouse gases. We're all just gonna die because of global, uh, global warming. warming. And that is not unless you're ma- unless you're Al Gore. That is not an exciting movie. And but it, it doesn't make for an exciting plot device. And like this is how they're gonna kill us. You know the aliens aren't threatening enough. Um, I mean, the, the, the CG is also, I mean, it's 1996 CG. It's also a problem. Um, uh, my biggest concern for this movie is that they had alien guns and didn't shoot them. Um, (laughs) but what have you? Um, I first came to this movie, like I said, it was, uh, I was 10 years old when this came out in theaters. It had to have come out in theaters. So I probably caught this when I was 11 or 12 as it was making its HBO rounds. So I watched this all the time. And I remember, um, I remember back then liking it a lot as a 12 year old, which says a lot for this movie. Sure. <laughs> but it was also, I think, um, and I can't remember this very clearly, one of my uh, earliest exposures to a kind of the look of alien technology. Because at a certain point, you get some interesting, uh, some interesting design concepts for the alien technology in this movie. Comparatively to other things, it may seem a little weaker, but for a 12 year old seeing it for the first time, that made an impression on me. Um, I've always been a big fan of alien movies, um, and this is probably one of the earliest ones I've seen, and I think that's why I had such an affinity for this movie, because it 
I was looking forward to seeing this movie tonight, too, because I hadn't seen it in a long time. When we got to it, the flaws showed. Um, like I said, uh, it is a long, it's a tad boring, and Charlie Sheen's not crazy enough to make this worth it. Not much in the movie is. Um, I'm going to have to pass on it. Uh, I give it two Jonesy Scorpions out of five Jonesy Scorpions. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. I would not recommend The Arrival. How much would this movie have been improved by simply recasting the lead? Uh, but with who? Well, I think they're Because gonna, if you're I think in the gonna... 90s, you can't do it now. You have to, like, oh, yeah. you got a list of characters from the 90s, 1996 you can put in this movie. I'll listen to that. Because we can't pick someone from now. Because now if they remake it, it's going to be a global warming movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. like yep. That. And we financed by it. him, too. Yeah. yeah. And they'll do like a uh, reverse casting of somebody. And Al Gore will be the big bad guy. Mm -hmm. just, for, just for funny. <laughs> but uh, you have to find someone from 1996 to put into this movie. Dolph Lundgren. Yes. Yeah. I'd watch that. Yes. <laughs> yes. There'd be more action. <laughs> yeah. I feel. The, the dialogue delivery would be interesting. It would be more, uh, just off that, it would be yeah. a more interesting movie. I mean, so, he's so, a scientist. Yes. He's a real life scientist. Know, right? He is, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It, but I'm like, they didn't know that in the 90s. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that like, only came out years later. Yeah. Like, you know, he's got a couple of degrees in chemical yeah. engineering. They're like, global yeah. warming. He's like, I would break you. <laughs> yes. I would break global warming. <laughs> He'd be so <laughs> sweaty. Too. So sweaty. Yeah. Sweaty. But, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think I can recommend it. My nostalgia, my memory of it was built up, and then it was broken with tonight's viewing. So mm. no, don't watch mm. the arrival. Sorry, Charlie That's Sheen. So Sorry, Terry Polo. What are you gonna do? Retire. Uh, <laughs> that means uh, next week is gonna be Holly's pick. Holly, what are we watching? Week holiday coming up. Valentine's oh, Day, so we're gonna be watching My Bloody Valentine. Which the one? original? The original. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Right. Wait. Is it going to be special in some way? Is it special? Is it going to be in three? We don't have it in 3D, do we? Fuck. The that original. Was the original. This, yeah. the right, remake the is in 3D. Right. The yeah. segue was the totally worthless. <laughs> I apologize for that. I thought we were watching in 3D. No, we'll it's not special. We'll talk about both of them on next, year, uh, next year's Sorry. show. On next week's <laughs> next, show. <laughs> next year's yeah. show. Both my bloody Valentine's, but we'll be watching the original. The original. Okay. So uh, until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.